Good morning. Today we're going to discuss myelination and this is a short primer of how to assess myelination on a MRI scan performed on a child. My name is Dr. Prabhu and I am a staff neuroradiologist at Children's Hospital in Boston. I have no conflicts of interest and I have no financial disclosures relevant to this presentation. The views expressed here are solely mine and meant for education of medical professionals and should not be construed as medical advice. Having said that, the presentation proper is designed to give you pointers to assess myelination on an MRI scan. It is important to look at the age-related signal changes on MRI scans. Basically, the watery, non-myelinated white matter becomes myelinated, and this is indicated by decrease in the T2 signal intensity as the unmyelinated white matter becomes myelinated. So therefore it becomes hyper intense, the hyper intense watery white matter becomes hypo intense on T2 weighted images. On T1 weighted images, this is slightly more complex change happening. However, what is important to note is that bright signal on T1 weighted images indicates myelination. This is caused by the magnetization transfer effect induced by the precursors of myelin. Let us look at the sequences that we use typically to assess myelination. In most instances, up to, up to the eight, age of about eight months of age, the T1 weighted images are pretty useful. This is particularly true on 1.5T scanners. The myelinated white matter, as we discussed in the last slide, d demonstrates T1 high signal. On T2 weighted images, the myelination is indicated by presence of low signal and these images are particularly useful after eight months of age. However, on 3T scanners, both T1 and T2 weighted images are equally useful in the early stages of life. And I, in my own experience, use T2 weighted images to assess myelination more often than not. An important thing to note is that T1 weighted, T1 weighted images demonstrate myelination changes earlier than T2 weighted images and myelination can appear fairly progressed on T1 weighted images and so as the child increases in the technological age increases the T2 weighted images become more and more useful an important way an important thing to remember is the way how myelination progresses in a child so uh, most uh, books de de describe this as a caudal to cranial uh, progression and to understand this, it is better to define to correlate this as a functional axis of myelination. So, as the child uh, does certain things in development, the, the the myelination progresses in that particular form. For example, the child initially breathes, uh, and so the dorsal brainstem uh, is myelinated at birth, so the child can breathe spontaneously. The areas of uh, the uh, periolandic areas uh, which are required for the child to obviously kick the legs and come out of the womb, those areas are myelinated at birth as well. In addition, the ventrolateral thalami which uh, take, take in the sensory inputs which are quite important when the child is born are also myelinated at birth. This progresses as the child is able to hear, then talk and then finally emote. Uh, this indicates progression of myelination from the parietal to the temporal to the frontal regions and so therefore it is from dorsal to ventral deep to superficial and caudal to cranial another way to think about this is development of an infant or a fetus from the fish stage to the human stage so it starts from the lower areas at the deep brain nuclei to the outer cortex so these this is a way in, useful way to remember how myelination occurs. This is what we call as a myelin map on titubated images. So in the neonate, the dorsal brainstem, ventrolateral thalami, and the posterior limb of internal capsule are myelinated. These are useful areas to look at. As the child in gets older, there's a progression of myelination to the cerebellar white matter, the anterior limb of the internal capsule, and the corpus callosum, which again myelinates posterior to anterior as the other white matter structures do the same thing. The, further on, the central semi ovale the occipital lobes myelinate in the next few months, and over the next few uh, months to the, the second year of life, 
The peripheral white matter in this occipital lobes, the central white matter in the frontal lobes also myelinate, and this is the progression of myelination in titubated images. To illustrate this, let's look at a term infant here with T2 related images on the top and T1 related images at the bottom. You, you can see that the dorsal brainstem indicated by the arrows is myelinated, which is in, uh, characterized by T2 hypo intensity and T1 hyper intensity. The posterior limb internal capsule is also myelinated here, as you can see on this image, indicated by the arrow here, and the ventrolateral thalami are also myelinated. Uh, as you can see on this image. The medial optic radiations are uh, also myelinate which you can see in this uh, slide here and this is again T2 hypo intense linear signal in the medial optic radiations. Nextly the pericentral, pericentral areas, the periolandic areas are myelinated as well and uh, this is a typical appearance in a term neonate. This is a newborn infant. Uh, again, just to revise, dorsal brain stem, some of the cerebellar white matter, the medial optic radiations, and the ventrolateral thalami and posterior limb of the internal capsule are myelinated. This periolandic and pericentral myelination as well. As this is a T1 with the images, which shows the same distribution. At six months of age, this progression of myelination, you now see that there is much more myelination has progressed significantly more in the cerebellar white matter and the posterior limb internal capsule is fully myelinated now and there is some myelination in the anterior limb of the internal capsule. Note that the splenium of the corpus callosum is also beginning to myelinate and the genu is faintly myelinating at this stage. The periolandic areas are far more darker and on titubated images indicating significant progression of myelination. T1-related images uh, now show T1 hyper, T1 hyper intensity in most of these areas consistent with the T1-related images being more advanced on the myelination front than T2-related images. At 12 months of age you can see that myelination has progressed even further. The splenium is nice and dark on the T2-related images and the anterior and posterior limb internal capsule are both myelinated completely. You also note that there is myelination now in the occipital lobes and some in the parietal lobes, but the frontal and temporal lobes are not yet myelinated. In the next stage, this is again, again the T1 rated images uh, showing the same thing at 12 months of age. In the next stage at 18 months of age, there is significantly uh, more myelination, especially in the frontal lobes, and you can now see that there are areas uh, of the frontal lobe uh, which are myelinated, including some of these subcortical U fibers here. However, uh, there are some patchy areas of non-myelination in the frontal lobes. Uh, this corresponds to the age where uh, the child is getting quite uh, much better at uh, expressing emotion and abstract thinking. And so that in this is this this is on the T2 T1 rated images. Uh, this, these images are not so useful because everything now looks quite bright on T1 rated images. And as we discussed in the first few slides, the myelination is best assessed at this age on T2 rated images alone. At 24 months of age, myelination is nearly of the adult pattern, with myelinate, uh, the the frontal lobes having myelinated completely, except for maybe some patchy little minimal patchy areas which are uh, left over. An important thing to note is that there is a variation called terminal zones of myelination seen in the peritrigonal areas as seen in this case here which may persist into adulthood. You have some areas of T2 hyper intensity which are separated from the ventricle by a rim of myelinated T2 hypo intense white matter and these areas are called terminal zones of myelination. It is very important to differentiate this from, per, from periventricular leukomalacia wherein the T2 hyper intensity is far more uh, congealed and is more uh, confluent and is hugs the lateral ventricles. In addition, the lateral ventricles in those cases will be more box shaped and uh, there is loss of volume in, these, in, those, con in those patients. This is a normal finding, the terminal zones of myelination are a normal finding and should not be called abnormal. 
In some cases, these have been shown to even persist into adulthood. Here's a case illustration of how this information we presented here can be useful. Uh, here's a nine-month-old male with poor head control and nystagmus. And the first thing you notice is the at nine months of age, you expect myelination to have occurred in the cerebellar white matter and in the brainstem, and you don't see any of that. This is T2 T hyper intense signal in these areas. And as you go higher up, you notice that there is lack of myelination throughout the uh, deep white matter as well. Just to compare this, we have a normal six month old neonate uh, compared to the index case here that we're looking at and we notice that at six months there should be myelination in the internal capsules and in the splenium and uh, you see that our child our patient here does not have any myelination in those areas the same thing uh, as you go higher up the periolandic areas the deep white matter and uh, the parieto occipital regions uh, and the frontal regions are all not uh, non-myelinated and he has a coronal image showing the very T2 hyper intense bright appearance to white matter. On MR spectroscopy, uh, notice that the NA peak is uh, preserved, but the choline peak is pretty low. And this child was again imaged at 26 months of age, and you see that there is again lack of myelination, and there's uh, absolutely no myelination at this stage either. And the choline again remains low, and the NA is preserved. This child was shown to have chromosome 18 Q duplication. And interestingly, chromosome 18 carries the myelin basic protein gene, which is an important uh, protein, which is part of the myelin. And therefore, we have no uh, real normal myelin in the uh, brain. So this is how uh, knowing uh, the normal pattern of myelination can be really useful in diagnosing hypermyelinating disorders and th therefore everyone should be aware of this particular um, pattern of a normal myelination in a, in a child from the neonatal stage to the adult pattern of myelination. Thank you very much.